Today I would like to show you how I'm going to implement my diesel heater not murdering my leisure cells. So imagine if you are running your diesel heater overnight and remember these, they don't care about the voltage, they'll just get less and less and less and less and will happily murder your deep expensive uh, leisure cell batteries. So what you can buy is this little thing here. I will zoom in on it, I zoom in on it. Okay, so this here is a voltage sensitive relay. Well, yeah, it's, it's kind of slightly more advanced than a voltage sensitive relay. So this one, uh, your, it's got a battery input, so you would put that to, you know, your power source, your battery, your laser cells, that's what you want to be taking the voltage from. You know, good at 12.8 volts, bad at 10.8 five volts I think it is for leisure. So it's got two adjusters on it. You can adjust when it cuts out and when it cuts back in again. Mine, I've set it to cut out at, uh, I think I want to say 11 volts, 11 volts and come back on at 12 and a half. So I will show, oh, I need to zoom out to show you this. This is going to be an interesting shot. Okay, you can see the little red LED lights on the display showing that the relay's on. And you'll notice the power supply is set to 12 and a half volts. So imagine this is your battery getting flatter and somewhere around 11 volts there it cut off so it's now stopped being on and it won't come back on again I've set mine to I think 12 and a half 12 and a half yes or 12.3 or 12.4 somewhere around charged battery status so that's that bit so that would be just connected straight to your I'm not sure Connect that straight to your leisure cells. Just it's basically two sense wires. These, we're not, well, they're going to be running a relay out of this input. It would have been better if they just made this a uh, purely relayed output, but what it does is it actually bridges the input and the output. So 12 volts comes in and 12 volts goes back out. It would be better if it was just two contacts that we could run that way. Because what we have to do is take the 12 volt output and run it to a relay of our own making, just a normal standard automotive relay, give it 12 volts, it turns on, take away 12 volts, it turns off. And what we do to that is, so these two green wires that you can see, barely see here, one is a continuous wire still going and the other one that I've split, that is the fuel pump feed. You basically you take one wire from the fuel pump, chop it and put it to the relay. So basically you're turning this input to the fuel pump on and off. That's all you have to do. The other two wires are just the 12 volts that come from the voltage sensitive relay. If you're wondering why you don't just have the 12 volt relay turn off the main power to your heater, it's because it won't go through its cool down cycle at that point. You will just have killed the power, the fan will turn off, it'll still be hot, so there's a, there's no, I wouldn't say, there's not, no, it's always a small risk of fire, but there's not as much a risk of fire as there is a risk of the heat of the heater damaging the circuit board that's inside the heater, because you don't want it to overheat. So what this should do is run along quite happily, battery voltage comes down, drops off, kills that relay, kills the signal to the fuel pump, the little controller will see there's no longer a fuel pump, and it will run its cool down cycle and will shut off and go away until you turn it back on again and reset it. Let us see that in action. So the upper power supply up there is at 12 and a half volts just now. So that keeps this really on, which keeps the fuel pump really on. So as far as the heater knows, it's quite happy. It's doing its thing, it's turned on now. It'll now turn the glow plug on and then run up to normal as usual. I've been resorted to using the small diesel heater with the end cut off it because it's the only one I've got left that works. I've had to steal the ECU out the other heater to put in a different heater that stopped working. My other weird heater that I got for free because they sent the wrong one has just stopped working. The ECU in it no longer runs the board. Uh, and I've ordered another standalone heater to use for, well, bits and pieces and running and testing things. So I've stuck the GoPro in there so you can see what's happening. The fuel I'm using is a random black fuel I found. I think it might be waste engine oil and thinners for all I know. It was what I had lying around. So needless to say, the carbon monoxide is also 
off the charts because the ECU that's in that is from an 8 kilowatt, so the fueling's off, you know, weird, and for some reason it's not accepting the pin number. Okay, we have ignition. Everything will now rattle, which is all right. But glow plugs on, fuel's pumping. I say fuel is pumping. You can see the burn is starting to burn. And I should bring this up so you can actually see the power supply. Oh, that'd be a good idea. There we go. You can see the power supplies. Just ignore this one. It's because I, I, if I turn it all down, oh, I can't get 12. Oh, I can't get the full ampage out of one power supply. Right, this is activated. We're just waiting for the glow plug to turn off. Okay, now it's gone into overfuel, but that's okay. We'll just, we'll, we'll run with it. So, if you can see up here, I'm now going to dial down this power supply until it gets to my cut off voltage, which was 11 volts. Right, should let you see the controller, see what happens. So, I'm gonna bring this down. 11 and a half, 11. So, Fuel pump has kicked off, or well, stopped being a fuel pump anymore. This is now detected, there is no longer a fuel pump, and has gone into shutdown. You'll see the flame goes out, well, pretty much, not instantly, but pretty quickly. It stops being a diesel heater anymore. Error number four, error number four is, I cannot find the fuel pump, which is true, because the fuel pump is disconnected. So that's pretty much it. It will now just run its cooldown cycle which is bring the glow plug on, get rid of the last of the fuel, and then it will just shut down. Once the heater has shut itself down, cooled down, gone back to normal, once the, and the battery voltage comes back up to your turning on voltage, once you press it start again, it'll just start up again normally as if nothing had ever happened. And that's, that's uh, the kind of benefit of that. So, uh, this, uh, this, the voltage sensitive relay is this is either seven pounds or eight pounds on Amazon. I will provide a link below. This is a standard automotive relay. These are like a pound or two pounds each. Bits of wire, few terminals, clips, crimpy things. Basically, for less than a tenner, you can uh, have a voltage sensitive relay and relay cut off that will stop your diesel heater murdering your uh, expensive lesser shells if you let it run all night or let it run unattended or just at any time. But also, this isn't just specifically for this heater. You can add anything you want on this really, or the output of this. I think this is good for up to 10 amps by itself. Let's say you wanted to run I don't know, the extractor fan in your van the whole time, and then you wanted to turn it off if the batteries were getting low. This is perfect for that as well. Power in from your batteries, power it to your extractor fan, turns off when, you, when the voltage gets low. You will have to set the voltage uh, yourself, which is kind of good having a bench power supply to test things with um because otherwise it's set very cons not conservatively uh, i think at the factory it's set to cut off at 10 and a half volts that's like that's your batteries are flat you don't really you want it a bit above that so there's some headroom and then it comes back on at like 12.6 which is kind of the top end of being charging well, apart from that 10 pounds bob's your uncle Keeps your diesel heater safe from overheating in the event of your batteries cutting out or in the Anyway, thanks for watching.